Hello everyone and welcome back to some more StarCraft 2. Today we're gonna have a look at two games played in one versus one, but with a twist. These players are not just gonna be playing with the Terran Protals and Zerg pieces. Instead, these games are played in the All-Stars Co-op PvP mod by King Cobra. Meaning that the players are gonna be playing with one of the co-op commanders, but it's still a one versus one. So even though, you know, they should be cooperating, it's not the case, man. There can only be one winner. So spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of Derelict Watcher TE. I didn't even realize that yet. I haven't seen this map in probably like, I don't know, like a decade? Probably like eight, seven years? I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, in the bottom left-hand corner with the two Protoss probes, we have none other than Cordiniac. And Cordiniac is gonna be playing with a Zeratul. Now, Zeratul, of course, will take a little bit of time before he is available, but once he comes out, he's gonna be incredibly powerful. Obviously, he can collect those, uh, those Zelnaga artifacts all over the map. Not exactly sure how that works in a one versus one, but I guess he just becomes more powerful and he unlocks upgrades. And obviously, right, I'm trying to think what strategy would I play if I was Zeratul. He has those, those holograms of photon cannons that he can teleport anywhere he wants as long as he's got vision. Which sounds pretty broken, but already there's a couple of these Zelnaga passageways coming up. Those are, of course... Uh, the gateways and well as you can see already here actually he's at 17 out of 100 supply there is no need for pylons anyways the opponent in the opposite corner with the red protos probes i guess yeah this is gonna be none other than phoenix and his name is templar Alrighty, so phoenix of course has access to all of those badass protos units essentially the way that this works is that you can research them and then like you know, one of the legendary Protoss heroes will be resurrected onto the battlefield instead. So this is pretty cool. Um, the two games that I'm casting today are from a tournament that Yorono organized a couple of days ago. So this is just a for fun tournament that he decided to uh, yeah, set up, which is pretty neat. And he sent me the two best games of the event. So I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down. Uh, there are a couple of rules. Um, so first off, in the first three minutes of the game, there is peace time. Meaning that I think... What did it say here at the beginning? Yeah, your units are invulnerable near the main base, but you can fight outside of the main bases. All right, so you can basically fight, um, but not inside of the main base until the three minute mark, which is fair, right? I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. And all of the players in this tournament also had to play a random, meaning that, uh, yeah, you've got, to, uh, you've got to get yourself uh, a little bit of experience out, I guess, with all of the different Call of Commanders. You can't just specialize in one, because the problem is, right, I've played these sort of mods before, and it's a lot of fun, but generally speaking, without those rules, there are strategies that are way too powerful. One that comes to mind right now is where you play Raynor, and since Raynor can quite literally make a barracks really early on into the game, and then pop Marines in like little drop pods anywhere, he doesn't even need vision, he can just drop them straight in the opponent's mineral line, uh, and that would arrive at like the 22nd mark, right? Quite literally. So, yeah, it's... Uh it's a little bit broken if you don't set up those couple of rules. But anyways, here we go. Phoenix is out on the battlefield. Kaldalas has joined him as well as Talis. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Zeratul is available. Um, so the way that Zeratul works is that you can see like a little dream, I suppose, right? Like an artifact. And once you collect the artifact, you get additional upgrades. And obviously, I mean, there's no vision here. Oh my god, we can actually see the little drop-down things right there at the top of the screen as well. That's actually kind of cool. Zeratul must be spotted by now, though. Oh yeah, there we go. Zeratul has a couple of abilities. Of course, he's not just your regular High Templar. Phoenix has been switched over to right now, but he's not a detector until a little while later into the game. Although, I guess he can recall. Is he gonna do that? He can recall. I think that ability allows him to get Talas and Kaldalas into the main base. Already though, we have one of the top bar abilities right here activated as well by Cordiniac. Oh my god, Phoenix just went full fidget spinner in the mineral line. <laughs> and that's the entire mineral line gone. Um... My god, this is actually so sick. Observer has right now arrived as well. Zeratul is gonna go up against a couple of these Protoss heroes himself. A little bit backwards in a way, because I'm pretty sure Zeratul wouldn't want to fight these, but... Anyways, it's been a little while since I've played the campaign. Maybe he's gone all evil. Taldarim has now joined as, uh, as well, but there's no Observer anymore because it did just now get sniped. Cordiniac, though, he's got an expansion and all that. He's getting a lot of gas income because this is continuously going on without any effort. The only problem is that he's only got two workers. Oh no, wait, he's got seven workers and two supply. Zeratul only two supply? I feel like Zeratul should probably be worth like 20 supply. Maybe more actually. <laughs> this is literally a one-man army. Anyways, so far he's actually doing quite a bit of work with just Zeratul. One of the immortals ends up going down. Carrier is coming out as well. I actually really like what the Phoenix player is doing here. Ooh, he can always use the... what's it called? The Void Seeker? Is that what it's called? 
Oh, oh, yep. <laughs> there we go. Um, using that big ability there, the uh, the AOE strike. Anyways, he can always use the Void Seeker to get him out of here. Which I believe is just... Yep, there it is. It's just cooldown based. He can uh, zap straight towards his own natural expo. And Zeratul managed to get him out of there. 21 kills to his name. And now actually, as far as the work accounts go, it's 7 versus 7. I was gonna say, this looks like an extremely one-sided game. If these are the best games from the tournament, I'm afraid, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I can't, I can't post that to the YouTube channel. I try and obviously bring you guys the highest quality matches. Alright, so now we've actually got ourselves a match, right? Now we've got ourselves a game. Zeratul, I think he's, I think he's hunting for one of those artifacts. So basically you see like a little vision above Zeratul, and then you have to figure out where on the map that is. I don't even know if the artifacts are part of it, but he's got the ability, so I guess it is. I guess it is something he can do. I'm just gonna follow him around. Yeah, yeah, look. So he's currently in a dream. Maybe it's the opposite end of the map? Probe is gonna scout for that. Anyways, in the meantime, the red Protoss player once again moving out. Bunch of different Protoss heroes have shown up. I like that he's going just for the different hero commanders. Honestly, they're very, very powerful. We have the Tesseract Monolith set up here as well as the Tesseract Cannon. Yeah, the Monoliths are incredible. They slow down units and just do a bunch of damage to them. Void Seeker at this point, by the way, in cooldown, so he doesn't need to be careful. I guess it is in the opposite end uh, of the map. Anyways, once again, okay, we have the Protoss units right now going into the main base. Zeratul using his cooldown ability there, but without detection, it's going to be extremely difficult to really get anything done. Okay, eventually it looks like there will be some vision. Void Seeker also has brought Zeratul back home, but if Zeratul ends up dying here, I've got a feeling that the Phoenix player is just gonna be able to overwhelm everything, and Zeratul needs to be extremely careful! Oh my god, he decides to go back in, actually, using once again that AoE ability of his. At this point, the detection of the Protoss player in red is gone, it seems, and it allows Zeratul to clean up as many of these units as possible. Phoenix right now is switching over, once again going full fidget spinner right there inside of the mineral line, and that is even more workers going down. Nexus right now being targeted as well, and we do see additional reinforcements ready to come across the map. There are observers in there, so Zeratul at this point, 35 kills to his name, trying to kill whatever he can. Can Zeratul hit air? Yeah, he can. I was actually not entirely sure. Okay, he can hit air. Even though he's just Dark Templar, I don't really know exactly how that works. Eater, Photon Cannons, can you guys target fire down the Observer? Yep, you can. Nicely done right there by Kordiniak. There's another Observer out. But honestly, Zeratul is so tanky. He's got so much health. I guess he did loot... What is he doing? Oh, he's just attacking the air units. I was going to say, why is the attack animation so weird? He was attacking one of the air units, and he actually stays alive once again. 45 kills right now to Zero Tool's name. Obviously, he can blink multiple times. Huh. Not bad whatsoever. That was, by the way, for all intents and purposes, a one base all-in. So, Templar is starting to actually run kind of low right here on resources. He's desperately trying to remake as much stuff here as possible, but I think that that was supposed to be a win already. Okay. I didn't actually realize that, but apparently Kordiniak... Even though I think he was just scouting for one of those artifacts. Um, yep, there it is. So that basically unlocks a whole load of upgrades and it makes Zeratul and whatnot uh, quite a bit more powerful as well. Ooh, he's gonna be able to go. Okay, there it is, the teleporting photon cannon ability. That's pretty sick. I didn't realize you get the top bar abilities exactly the same way as you do in Cole, but I guess that makes sense. Anyways, um, while the probe was scouting for the artifact in the bottom right hand corner, he decided to plant down a nexus over here as well. 4.5k gas coming up, by the way. Uh, not entirely sure what Zeratul is going to do with that, but... It's going to be quite difficult, actually, for the Red Protoss player to go in here. He's actually hitting a bit of a supply block as well. Uh, what does Templar have? Okay, so he's going to be able to switch pretty easily. Knowledge Seeker and Network Administrator? Are those, like, their taglines? I guess so. Anyways. I feel like you can just do one of those AoE swipes. Oh, there you go. That's a lot of interceptors, actually. Ooh, those carriers do, like, nothing. Anyways, if you do one... He two-shot a carrier?! Did Zeratul just two-shot a carrier?! Oh my god, you don't even really need to pay attention anymore to him, right? He's super tanky now that these artifacts are gathered. Once again, oh my god. This is more terrifying than a Widow Mine, and there's the Void Seeker once again going out. <laughs> Look at this Protoss player, all army hotkeying, trying to catch one unit. Turns out Zeratul is a little bit too strong. 
By the way, I have no idea as far as balance goes, how well balanced this particular mod is. I can imagine that certain, certain commanders are just gonna be far more powerful than they should be. I'm not gonna lie, so far Zeratul himself seems pretty good. <clears throat> if he can get one more of those artifacts, he's gonna unlock that big, like... What's it called? The monolith or what? Like, this is what he sees. How are you gonna... <laughs> this could be anywhere on the map. Anyways, um... Yeah, there you go. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He gets one of those big cooldowns, right? Like, whatever it's called. Like the... I don't know. The avatar? I think it's called avatar. I need CTG to join me for some casts here. <laughs> Phoenix, he needs to be upgraded to become a detector himself as well. Can be extremely helpful. Okay, photon cannons teleported into the main base. The Stasseract cannons, that is. <laughs> it's not actually the original photon cannon. It's actually the uh, a hologram of the original ones. So it's not like the original ones have died. You can still use those in a natural. The Protoss player in red decides to go down there. My god, we have the Warbringer now also added into the mix. But honestly, it looks to me like Zeratul is just still going to town. Zeratul <laughs> destroys everything. Oh yeah, yeah, once again, the detection is gone. Now the photon cannons are helping out over here as well. Zeratu has once again blinked underneath. And the hero of the Protoss continues onwards for a little while longer. Get out of here, Phoenix! Oh yeah, yeah. Should have gone by Talendar or something, man. <laughs> Kaldala's very brave. Very brave, Kaldala's. I'm impressed, dude. Uh, I don't think you can fight that. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm pretty sure everything just dies here to Zeratul. <sighs> oh, he actually has been put in stasis. I like it. Okay, so that's the stasis ability from Phoenix's uh, air mode. He can transition from one mode to the next. I kind of like it. Bottom right and corner, though, is still completely unscouted. We are now at 7,000 gas. So these gas geysers don't actually need any probes. They just automatically start up and then they start harvesting, so you never really run out. Pretty convenient. I think the main reason they have that is so that, you know, Zeratul uh, can actually dedicate some supply to units. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd have to soak up quite a bit of supply on probes that have to go into the gas geyser. Anyways, so far, he hasn't really needed units. Nah, you don't need units. Do the big swipe, dude. Yeah, pull the probes. Swipe. Oh, ho, ho! that's bad. You don't want to pull probes. I'm pretty sure you do not want to pull the workers. Because then they stack up. Has Zeratul gotten that fourth? No, he hasn't gotten the... What was it? Third? Fourth? I don't know. Once again, another cooldown ability right here. Void Race reigning supreme from the high heavens. And despite the fact that Cordiniac was like... I don't know, he was like at 5 supply earlier at the beginning of this game. Or like 7 supply or whatever. Oh, Zeratul died. He'll respawn at the Nexus in like 60 seconds. Uh... Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say, the natural Nexus also does count. Normally, he respawns in 60 seconds time, but I thought for a second it had to be the main Nexus and that the Zeratul's Beacon would not be available in the Nat. But it turns out the Natural Expo does get the Zeratul's Beacon if the Metro or if the main base is gone. That would have been a, a problem, right? Playing the Zeratul Commander without Zeratul. I'm actually excited to see what the second game is going to be like. It's actually really cool. I can 100% imagine, though, that most of the matches from this particular uh, tournament... They probably took a grand total of three minutes. <laughs> Just because, I don't know, one player spawns with Raynor and the other one is playing with Zagara. And as soon as the three minute mark hits, they're going at each other's throats at each other's main base. Actually, Zeratul versus Raynor would kind of work. Top left and corner, also being acquired by Cordiniac. He's adding in some of these uh, Zelnaga ambushers right now. They're definitely not stalkers, guys. They're definitely not stalkers, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Zeratu is on the hunt. I always like this aspect of... Uh, oh, okay. He sees the circle right now on the minimap as well. I, I'm not familiar with this mod, by the way, but it seems incredibly well executed. So if you want to give this a try against your friends as well, or maybe you can just host a custom lobby and find some players there. <laughs> okay, now he's going to be able to get that top bar ability. Um, if you search for All-Stars Co-op PvP mod by King Cobra... You should be able to find it on the European servers, and you can try this out. Okay, so there's the Avatar. I think it's called Avatar, anyways. This is an incredibly powerful unit. Not exactly sure how it's gonna play out right here. Anyways, all of the Protoss heroes have assembled. Mojo is here, Talus, Clolarian, Warbringer, Kaldalis, Talus. Phoenix himself, obviously, on the battlefield as well in Dragoon form. 
I think this is all of them. I think there's eight. Wait, where's Probius? My god, these these Tesseract Monoliths are too strong, though. Are you gonna go for the counterattack, Zera, too? I'm not 100% sure if I agree. Well, there's that Avatar of Form being thrown into the mix as well. It's spotting these charged crystals, and oh my god, is that a... That's a dead Protoss army. Oh my god, okay. The Avatar of Form just basically destroyed everything. I mean, there's a couple units here as well. I don't want to, like, trash talk the ambushers, but, uh... Seems to me that these units are pretty powerful. Zeratul is already thinking about going for the counterattack, and I think that was indeed the right call. He's gonna go into the natural expansion. I think you gotta pull probes early if you wanna pull them at all. Look at this. The patience or Kondiniak as well. He's gonna teleport and, yeah, use the strike. It's the one-two punch, man. You wait until the workers get pulled. Seems to be the right call, and now these structures also get teleported across. Actually, I, mm, I think you can teleport them straight here if you want to, but... I think this is actually one that he's dedicating to the natural expansion of his opponent. Oh my god, this is insane. These Tesseract monoliths are so strong. Obviously, co-op was made with cooperation in mind, right? May have guessed it by the name. Uh, this is a little bit different. And it turns out, yeah, it turns out that um, Zeratul is a little bit better than Phoenix. Yep, just, just, uh, just a tiny little bit. I like the Vidget Spinner attack earlier, though, at the beginning of this match that killed all of the probes, but... Apparently, it turns out you don't really need much of an army, as long as you have Zeratul himself. <laughs> now at 147, 148 confirmed kills, it is gonna be Cordiniac who obtains the victory. Alrighty, so here we go. We are on Daybreak, and it looks like we've got two Zerg players. Nice, at least judging by the creeps. So spotting here in the top right-hand corner of Daybreak, playing with the... I was gonna say the pink Zerg drones, but I guess it is the pink Zerg SCVs. It's a little bit strange. We're looking at none other than Yorono's main base, and Yorono is going to be playing with Stukov. So Stukov is going to be able to spawn a gajillion minions very, very quickly, very early on into this game. Hmm. Not exactly sure how that works, though, right? Because by the time that you send these units across the map, uh, they're going to be timed out, right? They all have, like, a, a death timer, and as soon as the timer runs out, they will... Mm -hmm. All right, anyways, his opponent in the opposite corner. Yeah, you could set the beacon over here. So this is Yorono's beacon. But, uh, it's not gonna achieve much. Anyways, playing right here with the, what is this? The teal, the cyan, whatever you want to call it. The light blue Zerg drones. We are looking at none other than Zeliath. Zeliath is gonna be playing with Zagara. Alrighty. I think that this one is gonna be pretty cutthroat, right? Because Zagara, I mean, she can only have 100 supply worth of stuff, if I'm not mistaken. And basically, yeah, she gets free units everywhere. Like, for example, the Bailings, right? They periodically spawn into the battlefield. She spawns two drones at once as well, which is incredibly powerful. She spawns Zerklings extremely quickly. Whereas Yorono is going to have to rely a little bit more on his cooldowns. I'm assuming, yeah, he will have that cooldown ability at the top of the screen as well. So, you will have the uh, Apocalypse and, like, all of the other big cooldowns as well. The Alexander, the Infestation of the Ability. I mean... It should be pretty cool. I actually like what he's doing here, going for a bit of a wall off. So we have an infested factory coming up. Most of the time, Stukov seems to be played by using his infantry, but he does have the longest range siege tanks in the game, uh, where the siege tanks can quite literally... Well, they shoot Banelings. Of course they do, right? That makes sense. Uh, they can quite literally shoot away from, like, you know, more than a screen. So it's pretty powerful. Anyways, Zerking Speed not coming up just yet. Zagara also hasn't expended yet. I would love to see an expo, because... You're not really gonna trade very cost-efficiently. Yorono, though, has sent an SCV towards the bottom right-hand corner of Daybreak, okay? Another SCV coming across as well. Wow, that was... strange. <laughs> These Bailings right here, not on counter, or not on attack move, rather. So, uh... SCV almost got hugged there. Alright. So, are we gonna make a proxy command center in the bottom right-hand corner? Because it feels like that to me. Uh, there are a couple of upgrades as well in all of these structures, which are extremely good. You do kind of need a tech lab in order to research anything, though. But yeah, it is going to be an infested command center in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Okay. Here go the infested of Stukov. They basically just follow... Oh my god, I forgot about that. Zagara also gets little splitter banelings. So when a baneling explodes, it splits into like two more smaller banelings as well. Seems balanced. Anyways, um, he's basically just gonna be sending it towards whatever mark he's got set up on the minimap. And, oh my god, why is that, why is that infested barracks not, oh my, okay, that was bad. I don't know why it's, why it's floating. 
feel like it should definitely not have been doing that. So now the SCVs inside of the main base are going to be picked off. Zagara, even though she's a queen, she's a brute mother as well. She's not going to be going across that map very slowly. She's not going to be moving off creep that slowly. Luckily, though, Yorono does still have an expo on the other side of the map. He's going to be going for an infest starport, but I don't think it's really going to be able to produce that many units. Although, obviously, the units actually do spawn out of the cocoons and not out of the structures themselves. So maybe those will actually be able to finish up. Apocalypse is available. Yorono is going to be chasing Zagara with the Apocalypse. My god. Yeah, just another day at the office. <laughs> run, Zagara, run! Are you gonna roll Banelings into that thing? I don't know if you want to do that either. Anyways, bottle right in corner. Wait, did he cancel it? Oh, it never finished. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, so now you're running only a six supply worth of stuff. But he does have those big cooldowns, and he does have two infested benches out at this point as well. Honestly, the Alexander dropped inside of the opponent's main base would be amazing. I think that's what Yorono is looking for here as well. Sending an Overlord in the direction of the opponent's base. Not bad whatsoever. Obviously, the Battlecruiser itself could also fly around. So there it is. Yep. I love this idea from Stukov. Just taking care of these couple of units here. And once Stukov obviously loses the Alexander, it will still actually fall on the ground and spawn infested for a long duration. Infested now also attacking the hatchery right there of Zeliad, so he's in a lot of trouble right now. We do see once again that hunter-killer cooldown, but at this point, there's really not that much anti-air available right here for the player in blue. The Banshee's over here as well, just absolutely harassing the opponent to death. Is he mind-controlling an Overlord? Not exactly sure what the purpose of that is, but I guess Stukov is just, well, I think it was just killing it actually. It's just the way that the Alexander kills them. All right, so wait, what do we have? That proxy that proxy CC in the bottom right corner, it never was canceled, but I actually think it's the right call, because at this point, Zeliath is soon gonna get the revelation message of his opponent, at least that's what he's expecting after he kills this CC over here, probably not realizing though that there's another CC somewhere out in the map. As far as the structures go, there's really not that much available actually. Oh my God, this could actually still be a win. This could actually still be a win right here for our pink Zerk. Zagara is gonna go to town on what he probably assumes is the last structure of the player in pink. But it turns out there's one more in the bottom right hand corner, even though it's in production. Actually, wait, what? Why is there two on production? It's showing me as if there's two on production, but I think that may just be a little bit of a bug. Fair enough. Bailing nest over here also, well, slowly will be picked off. And as far as structures go right now, wait. Oh, there's a couple of gases being made right here for Zagara. Okay. So Zagara has the final structures over here. Zeliad says WTF as he doesn't figure out exactly what is going on. Yorono, I don't know if he was anticipating this like five minutes ago, but he already sent that SCV out awfully early. The CC in the bottom right corner finally gets found actually. Drones over here will be attacking it as well. He gets one of the extractors started up. So at the very least, Stukov has not won the game just yet. It is now a rush for the bottom right and corner. Bailings have shown up. Infested command center will be killed. And just like that, it is gonna be Zagara, also known as Zeliath, who obtains the victory. Wow, when I first started recording this video, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, but that was actually really sick. GG's.